Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, fifth grade parents. Um, right now what we're going to do is we're just going to explain some of our subtraction strategies that the fifth graders have been learning. Um, we have four different strategies that we've learned so far. Subtracting in parts, adding up, subtracting back, and then changing the numbers to make an easier problem. We'll start with subtracting in parts. And I'm going to use the same problem for each of these, 892 minus 567. For subtracting in parts, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with 892, and then I will break 567 apart into different parts. So to start with, I will start by just taking the 500 out. 892 minus 500 would give me 392, and I've taken care of the hundreds. Then I bring down 392, and I take care of the tens place, the 60. 392 minus 67 gives me 332. And then I drop down 332, and I subtract my last part, 7. And that gives me 325. Then altogether I've subtracted 567, but I've just broken it down into parts. And that's how we subtract into parts. Adding up, I start by taking my problem, 892 minus 567. I start with my lower number, 567. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding up until I get to 892, and then I'll add up my total for those numbers that I added. So 567, I always start simple with the ones place. In order to get up to an even number, 567 plus 3 gets me to 570. Then I drop my 570 down, and I take plus 30 gets me up to 600. Now from 600, it's easy to see where I can go from here. 600 plus 200 would give me 800, and now I'm really close. 800 plus 92 gets me up to 892. And so I started here at this number, and I've added up. Now what do I do to get my answer is I add this up. 200 plus 92 gives me 292. Then I add in the 30 and the 3 there, and that gives me 325. And that's how I add up. Subtracting back is very, very similar to subtracting in parts, but it breaks it down just a little bit more. Um, 892. We start with 892, and then we'll subtract 100 at a time. Now, some kids might even go, okay, well, I can subtract a little bit more. They might go, okay, that time I can subtract 300. And then so far they've subtracted 400 total here, and so they know I need another 100. And then they would start looking for other chunks they could break up. 300, 400, 500. Then they could look back. 392 minus 60 is easy. And then for some kids, they might go, well, I don't know what 2 minus 7 is, so they might even break it up even more. 332 minus 2 gives me 330. And then they know they have 5 left. 325. This is the last one, changing the numbers to make an easier problem. This is probably the most difficult one for kids to do, but it's actually the simplest process. 392 minus 567. What you're doing is you're adjusting them, the numbers, one or both of the numbers, to make a problem that's easier to solve. For example, on this one, 567 would be difficult to do in my head, so I might change it to 570 to make an easier problem to do. Now, I always tell my students beforehand, consider what you did to the original problem. In order to get here, I added three onto my original problem. I took three too many away. Okay? So I'm going to have to think about that at the end of the problem. 592 minus 500, or I'm sorry, 892 minus 570 gives me 322. My problem is basically done, except for now I have to go back and think, I took away three too many between here. I took away three more than I had to, so I have to add those back in. And then I get my answer and I'm done. Those are the four strategies that we've been working on so far. 
And we have one more strategy that we will be learning. Thank you.